Hey guys, welcome to the video. Today we're gonna to be talking about these 12 sketchy, top tier red flags you have to avoid when you're seeing someone. My number one rule is, if something doesn't sit right, it's not right. Number one, how do they treat people? Say you're on a date with this person and they make side comments. They're saying like little things like, oh, I can't believe that person would do this. Oh, that person doesn't even look this. Or even if like a homeless guy walked by or something. What are they saying side comments? That would definitely be a red flag. Because think about this. If you're in public and someone's just openly insulting someone behind their back, what does that tell you about their morals and their values? Run. Number two, if they talk negative about their exes or still keep their exes in their life, that's a huge red flag. And also keep in mind, if this ex is like very recent, then they probably shouldn't be dating anyways. Yes, yeah, so if someone's negatively always talking about their ex, that means they still haven't got over that hump that they had with that ex. So that also kind of shows that they're not emotionally available for their next coming relationship. And you know, if they have each other still in their life, like if they still have each other on social media, if they're still texting, X, Y, Z, or if they say that they're a close friend from someone else or one of your best friends, it's just a waste of time. Don't waste your time with people who wanna keep their exes in their lives. That means they're still attached and they still haven't broken off from that and they're still keeping you or them as an option. And honestly, if they're still in their life, you don't wanna be a part of theirs because you last thing you want to happen is be in this weird love triangle and there's just so much drama and you don't want that. And also, if they're still talking to their ex, that means they're not mentally checked in to dating. That means they're still on this whole thing that they were before and they're not moving on from it. So that means they never had time to heal and process all the bad and all the good in a relationship. Fellas, if they don't have any girlfriends and if they do, how do they treat you and themselves? A girl showing that she doesn't have any friends tells me one of two things. One, you're either a backstabbing girl who can't have, doesn't know anything about loyalty or friendship or relationship for that matter, or two, they're just very dramatic. That means you cannot communicate a proper conversation with your own sex. So that screams huge red flag. But also remember this, when you're hanging out with her friends, how are they treating you when you are all in the same room? Is there this weird elephant that's like weird? Are they laughing a lot to amongst themselves? Are you kind of feeling left out? That's a red flag. And to be fair, this could be an over-exaggeration. You know, maybe that you're just thinking that there's a problem, but there really isn't. And it just depends the circumstance. But you know, it's definitely something to keep in mind just in case if it does happen. When women say they've never had a long-term relationship. Are you kidding me? You've been around this planet for 20 plus years and you've never been in a serious long relationship. Honestly, this should be a serious red flag that everybody should take seriously because it's showing me that you cannot take anything serious and maybe you're not ready for a serious relationship. That's fine. But if you tell me you want a relationship and then it doesn't work out, don't be surprised if it doesn't. You're showing me you want to chase the best thing possible out there, but you're not even really looking in front of you or the one thing at a time. And one thing to keep in mind, it kind of shows me that you're not serious about this relationship or any coming closing relationship. I mean, I don't want to be the next guy to go through the baggage relationship that you're going to provide to me because that's exactly what's probably going to happen. Because if you're 20 plus and you haven't been in a serious relationship and yes, there's circumstances, you know, that's just going to scream red flag. Number five, a bad relationship with their mom and dad or very codependent on mom and dad. I dated a girl who was very dependent on their parents and it taught me a couple things, okay? One was anytime there was a bad issue, daddy. Anytime she needed money, daddy. Anytime she needed anything, daddy. The other thing, anytime when daddy didn't provide, I had to provide. So anything that her real dad said no to, I say yes to. So it just wasn't a healthy, independent, Substaining relationship. What I've seen from both sides, I've seen girls that are really great with their parents and I've seen girls that are really bad with their parents. And the patterns I've seen is pretty straightforward. The girls that don't have close relationships with their parents shows that they're, they don't, especially with their mother, they don't have the feminine energy that they have to be that feminine woman. 
So if you don't have a feminine woman, you're gonna have a masculine woman. And for most guys, that's not attractive. And with the dad side, I've seen a lot of remorse and a lot of abandonment issues more than anything. Does their politics match yours? When I'm on like a first date with a girl, I try to avoid this actually because, you know, you don't wanna give the wrong first impression because if you're on a date with a liberal, which most girls are, and you know, most guys are conservative, you guys are gonna have some difficulties. But if the conversation does get brought up, it's also good to keep in mind where their values and morals sit with them. Because one thing I've known, everybody believes in something. Everybody believes in something. Just because you guys have different outlooks on politics doesn't mean you guys aren't compatible. Like my grandparents have different two uh, political views and they're been together for like 30 years now. So at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter, but it's something to keep in mind I recommend talking about the politics maybe like two or three times after you guys hung out because then you kind of get to know them a little better. Like you guys have all the time in the world. There's no rushing to figure out who exactly you are the first date and figure out if you're my love of my life. Number seven, gentlemen, pay for the first date. I had some different changes in this, to be honest with you, because of modern dating and how lovely it is. But... If you generally want to see how things go, I think it's in your best interest to pay for the first date because at the end of the day, it is an investment. And at the end of the day, like it takes two to tango. So, but gentlemen, keep this in mind. I've seen this time after time and you guys probably have your own experiences with this. Some women will literally take advantage of that first date. I've known women to go on dates just for free food or just because they're starving or X, Y, Z. So we hear, sting and string high over this girl that you're going on a date with, don't do that. Just don't, just don't do that. It's always good to consider the possibility that she's probably just using you. But that's why I think it's still important to pay for the first date because at the end of the day, you're investing your time into something that could potentially work out. But if that's the case and you do wanna take her out for dinner, be my guest. But I would recommend the first date would be going to do something good, doing something positive. There's so many first date ideas out there you could do for free and you literally don't have to pay a cent for them. Also, the first date, maybe keep alcohol out of the mix and do something like physical or fun or engaging. Don't take her to the movies. Don't, don't like pay for something that's completely unnecessary that doesn't make sense. I've seen even people go take dates to like a homeless shelter and serve out food on their volunteering time. And you know, that right there, if you suggest something like that, that right there, you'll instantly know if she's worth your time or not, because then you see if she's trying to use you for that first meal or free meal or that experience or whatever. Number eight, if they disrespect you. Now, this is pretty obvious, hopefully, but if you get an ounce of feeling of disrespect, she's obviously not ever going to respect you. There is some, there was a moment in that time where she was like, I do not give a about this guy and I don't give it about this guy. So I don't care how I treat this guy. Do not waste your time, fellas. Number nine, a real man would dot, dot, dot. Oh, if a real man liked me, he would dot, dot, dot. Don't fall for this trap. This is clearly a woman that's just trying to be manipulative and trying to get what she wants and trying to see how far back you'll bend for her. Now, there's nothing wrong with bending back to a girl, but at least go out with her for more than one date. Like that'll come down the road, you know? Let her, let her ask what she wants for later. Provide that when you can later, when there's a foundation, not when you've just met this girl and you're head over heels over a woman that you just met on Tinder. Don't waste your time, guys. And obviously she's probably got some clear true intentions behind closed doors. Number 10, a serial dater. Now I've known girls like this and they just are a laundry list of red flags. That means they're probably promiscuous. They don't care who they sleep with. Um, they don't respect themselves. They've never had time to heal or self reflect on their past relationships. So if they just got out of a long-term relationship, and then they're dating someone new in the next month, that's not healthy. And also, what is that gonna tell you after you dating this girl? Like obviously, hopefully, there'll be enough red flags before you come to this realization, but if you don't, this is an obvious red flag to run. Number 11, 
Now this is gonna be a little controversial and so is number 12, but I'm just gonna tell you. But guy best friends, if a girl says she has guy best friends, run. Now obviously there's very, 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 very slim circumstances to this when a girl has guy best friends, but at the end of the day, they know their intentions. They just wanna tell you that they, oh, they're just best friends. They're not best friends. No guy and girl can be best friends, okay? It just doesn't happen. I was best friends with this girl and she was, she's still a homie, but we don't talk anymore. And she's in a committed relationship and I'm very happy for her. We talk time from time, but even her boyfriend would probably agree with me that <laughs> guy best friends don't exist. I was actually trying to be with this girl actively at the time. And to be fair, I was young, okay? I was young, right? Still figuring out the process. But that right there shows that you cannot be best friends with a girl. Now, this is just a preference for a lot of dudes, okay? There's a lot of guys that'll say it's not the preference, but it should be. I am territorial, right? And because I care. If I don't care, I'm not territorial. You have guy best friends, it's showing me a couple things, okay? It's showing me that you're a liability. It's showing that you aren't really that interested in me. You're showing that I'm not in your scope. Because the thing is, with ladies, they always have their eye on somebody. A hundred guys will hit them up, but they'll only be interested in one dude. And that's just facts. Because girls are sappy suckers. And they love love. Number 12. Controversial, do remind you, Instagram, 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 Instagram. Now I'm not saying that if you have Instagram, it's a huge red flag, but I'm saying, how do you use Instagram? So the thing is, women are never single, right? Like they have hundreds and hundreds of DMs, no matter what you look like, no matter, regardless. Like there's always a guy out there wanting you. Us guys, we don't get that. We look at our inboxes empty. Unless we're actively trying to talk to someone, that's just how it works. And, and girls know what they're doing on Instagram, okay? They, they say that they're doing it for them, but they're, you know, they're, they're doing it for other reasons too. Like, don't get me wrong, like getting attention is nice. Everybody loves attention, regardless of what your gender is. And you know, at the end of the day, girls are the gatekeepers. They are the gatekeepers. They decide who they want and guys decide what they can get. But the thing is too, like, you know, if you see a girl's Instagram and it's just like more so focused on her and how good she looks in that bikini, like when I'm looking at a girl and I look for these things, like how much they party, what are their highlights like, X, Y, Z, what about your family, dude? <laughs> where's, where's pictures of you at the dinner table with the family? Where's pictures of you know, spending time with your dog or cat or, you know, anything else other than you in this fine ass bikini. Instagram is this wonderful thing that shows serious validation to people's egos. My problem with social media nowadays, it gives people instant gratification. And the problem with instant gratification, it comes with poor decisions, always. And you know, if there's something ever that someone says or does when you're on this first date or just in the early stages of dating, something that sits with you and doesn't seem to escape your brain, that's a red flag. The thing is, a lot of things happen to us all the time, right? We overthink things all the time, things go in and out of our brains, you know, whatever. We're complex creatures. But if something sits in your head and then it sits in your gut, that's a red flag. There's so many videos out there that show so many different types of red flags and all these other different things, but I thought I'd narrow it down to 12 of my best top tier red flags to avoid and keep an eye for. So fun fact about Instagram, worldwide users, males are 51%, women are 48% users. But I was like, huh, that's kind of surprising because you would think women would be more on Instagram in the Western society today. So it says here that US and Canada is about 56.5 female are on Instagram and only 43.5 males are on Instagram. But anyways, guys, thank you for watching this video. I hope this helped you guys. I've been in this position before. You guys will get through it 
if any of these red flags triggers you to run, do it because it's just not worth your time. Be the bigger man. Don't, don't simp. Don't, don't fall into these traps that happen. If you're looking for a relationship, you're not going to find one. But if you focus on yourself, work hard on yourself, the right woman will come to you. And if you guys have a moment, please subscribe, hit that little bell. I'll be posting at least once a week. So I'm going to be working very hard to bring the content you guys deserve and need because there's a lot of people out there that need someone out there and I just want to help. Thank you guys. Take care.